Hi everyone, this is a special episode of Vienna Arbitration Talks dedicated to the humanitarian relief in Ukraine. We've been receiving shocking images from the war in Ukraine for a week now, while the lives of our friends and colleagues, including those from the arbitration community, have been in danger. More than a million civilians have fled Ukraine already, and uh, up to three more million are expected to do so by the European Union. This uh, humanitarian disaster has left many of us in the international arbitration community feeling speechless and helpless. But uh, some of our colleagues took action immediately and developed projects to help the displaced people of Ukraine in and outside of Ukraine. And I'm very happy, uh, very grateful actually, that we can host three of them uh, in our show today. We have uh, on the line Olga Hamama in Frankfurt and Nina Levchuk in Berlin. Uh, they are the creators of the really impressive project unitedforukraine.org. And uh, in Budapest, we are joined by Oliver Kopany, who is one of the creators of ukrainianlegalaid.org. Uh, hello to all of you, and thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us. I'm sure that uh, you have a lot of very important work to do these days, so many thanks for being here. Um, I thought maybe we should just go straight to the topic. Uh, I would start with you, Olga and Nina. Um, maybe uh, I have met Olga before in Kiev, actually, at an arbitration conference. Uh, maybe our viewers would still maybe appreciate if you could shortly introduce yourselves. Well, at, at least we are trying. At least we hope so. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much for inviting us and providing this platform. I think it's very, very important um, at the moment. So, as you mentioned, professionally, I'm international dispute resolution and uh, sports lawyer. Um, I've been working for Freshfields Bukhaus Deringa for more than 10 years. And since two years, I'm focusing on um, acting as neutral, as arbitrator in sports and commercial arbitration disputes. Uh, and also started, um, well, before the crisis, uh, some uh, first um, company as an entrepreneur specializing on sustainability tra transition. Uh, thank you, Olga. Uh, how about you, Nina? Thank you very much. So, uh, similar to Olga, in professional life, a completely uh, different uh, we have a different focus rather than the NGO and volunteering job. I'm working in the tech field. I work for Google and leading startup and venture capital uh, business for Google Dach. Um, and uh, currently we joined efforts together with Olga and many other people uh, and due to crisis obviously take the I would say driving seats to help our people in Ukraine through the unitedforukraine.org and that's where we're working for 24 7 so i could say this is now the main job that we have and main mission that we have to help uh, rescue people who need it right now uh, i think it's really impressive uh, you have launched United for Ukraine.org in a matter of days, and uh, you already have over uh, 100 volunteers, if I understand correctly. Uh, most of these people are in Ukraine right now. Can uh, one of you tell us what these people have been reporting? What are they experiencing? Yeah, I, I, I'm happy to jump in as well. Um, I think, uh, uh, so first of all, the people that are volunteers, they on the ground, so they on the other side of the borders, and that's how they able to do the work 24 seven to rescue the people who is on another side at the Ukrainian side, right? And um, we have such a various actually backgrounds in our team. So obviously Olga brought super strong expertise from the legal perspectives, lawyers, firms, and et cetera. But on another side, we have a various marketer people like marketing, uh, tech people, uh, like uh, uh, audit people, uh, and so on. So I, I, I could count only in my mind like a couple of big tech company volunteers who are already supporting us, but as well like different people from FMCG company and so on. So it's like really not about one specific field. It's everyone who absolutely feel passion in their heart to join together and support uh, Ukraine people. Thank you. I can imagine the, the war itself uh, is disrupting also their, their activities there, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, we really had the first call, I think, at 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning. I mean, not as a team yet, but individual calls one week ago on Thursday after the first explosions hit cities of, you know, many of us where we have still our families and relatives and colleagues. 
Um, and since then, you know, I'm really in awe of the efforts of the team and of the people working 24 seven, sleeping probably two to three hours. And, um, you know, emotionally it is taking a huge toll. I think on the one hand, the only, it helps to deal with the situation if you have the feeling that you are doing something and helping something and not just watching from the sidelines. On the other hand, it's, you know, we are talking to team members and we can be like celebrating a small progress in one minute and in the second minute someone will be break, breaking down because messages are coming from Kherson, for example, that buildings of grandparents have been bombed or some team members cannot reach their relatives for 24, 48 hours. It's, it's, you know, it is devastating, but I think what um, makes Ukrainians so special, supported by so many at the moment, is that we really unite in an incredible manner and help, try to help each other and help especially those who are on the front lines in the country and fight. It's really impressive uh, how you managed to do it in such a short time and I can imagine that it helps a little bit because you are really working and your volunteers, uh, thank you also for the volunteers, they are really helping out in this. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, the project, uh, the website itself, um, how does that work and what kind of help do these uh, volunteers offer the ones that are maybe outside of Ukraine now or the people like uh, us that can register also on the website? Yes, happy to take this uh, question. Um, so basically the situations we're facing, people are standing in the borders for a couple of days, like my mom as well just recently arrived finally uh, to my place by being at the border for five days with no food, you know, with no shower, with nothing, with two small kids. And it was, oh, you could imagine, very exhaustive uh, journey that uh, people are currently facing when they're trying to uh, pass the border. So what we did with the team, uh, we created a very simple website, you know, as simple as that uh, even 80 years old people could fill it in. And we do have requests from this uh, age group uh, in our system. Um, they could uh, decide where they need the help the most right now. So, for instance, is this a, a, a shelter, is it a housing, or is that a, a legal advice, or maybe there is any other uh, support that they are now facing, like uh, medicine support or humanitarian support, or even hotline in the countries where, they, where they're currently going, or maybe they already just passed the border and they have no idea what to do and where to go. Um, so we're picking up those requests uh, behind on the back end. We have uh, um, like partners with whom we're cooperating. Some of them it's a big booking platforms. Another one is uh, just an uh, authorized volunteer group by embassies. And we're basically connecting those requests with those groups. Uh, we have fantastic uh, leader behind that, Daria, who is working. I even I don't even know how many hours, definitely 24-7 to make it happen. And uh, and by that, we're providing basically the support. We're tracking the progress. In the last couple of days, we were able to go through the 1,000 people uh, housing requests. And I even don't know how many legal, so Olga would know better. But this is the way how the system works. And of course... Um, uh, through the our platform, people could find the most useful information like refugee centers, as I said, emergency contacts, and so on. So it basically connects the people that are trying to help with people that absolutely. need help. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And aggregate um, all useful information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I was wondering, uh, I understand there are tens of thousands of people coming to the website for help. Uh, do you need more volunteers? What can uh, our viewers do to help? Well, there are a lot of possibilities. So what we do, we have in our team, um, you know, we have different work streams uh, in the back. We have someone who is uh, has um, deep experience in the NGO world uh, within Ukraine and outside. Uh, so, for example, we have a curated list of for funding. So we are in contact with Ukrainian authorities, with people on the ground. So we do understand what are the most pressing issues within Ukraine. So if, for example, people would like to provide financial supports, please like turn to our website, um, indicate it, and you'll find the list 
of possibilities to support Ukrainian NGOs and foreign NGO, Western NGOs based on the needs as we see them. Um, we do need more support because we have mostly legal audience here, uh, of course, from the legal field. Uh, a lot of we've had a lot of, um, you know, firms reaching out to, uh, to us. So the community keeps growing. At the moment, uh, we see about 30 to 40 requests per day. And the number is constantly growing, though, of course, with the visibility of the platform but also with increasing number of questions. So at the moment, the questions just for you to understand are, for example, can I enter Romania without passport because I fled without you know, having the ability to take any documents? Um, but we expect you know, to have more questions related to asylum, to visas, to housing, also to residence permits. Uh, we also see now requests coming in from the business where, for example, corporations, you know, they want to move and they want to continue working and to continue operating. Um, of course, many people hope that it is just a temporary right condition and they want to return back. They want to keep uh, their jobs. So we expect not only the number of uh, legal requests to grow, but also, uh, you know, the scope of the variety of a request will go as well. Um, of course, we see that uh, refugees are now uh, reaching countries which are not direct immediate neighboring countries. So, of course, we started with Moldavia, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Poland, but now we are getting requests, legal requests related to the UK, to the US, to France, to Germany, Italy, you know, you name it. Um, we have even people, you know, advising from Turkey and uh, Australia at the moment. So, again, their uh, support can be provided. So, please, um, you know, contact us via the website. Indicate if you would like to join uh, the circle of law firms and lawyer, individual lawyers supporting us, that's possible as well. And we have a lot of individual contacts on the ground. So, really, organizations in various countries saying, for example, we are providing housing in Hungary, please, you know, you can tap into our um, information, into our offers and match those with refugees from Ukraine. So this is one of the possibilities. Translations are issues quite often, depending on the country. Some countries are easier, some countries are very difficult. We need a lot of translators there as well. Um, yes, I don't know, Nina, did I leave something out? We are looking for uh, team members. We are incorporating right now because, well, you know, we didn't exist seven days ago as, a, uh, as an initiative. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So, yes, we will be looking also for various streamlines and support within the organization. And we are absolutely looking for fantastic technical solutions like I guess our next guest speaker gonna describe of. So we are very open to partnership because I do believe in our days, obviously I'm coming from tech background, but I do believe in our days uh, with those access to the technology and uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence and so on, that we could have access to, we could really resolve people issues way faster and way more efficient than actually uh, manual way that majority of the platforms working right now but of course it's important to keep empathy that is coming from humanity in that project so I think that could be a definitely perfect match for us if we uh, if, if uh, one of your listeners or anyone knows someone absolutely crazy with a technology view and could match with us to help to make it uh, global and and support basically way more volumes of fresh juice that we could do it right now manually. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will be linking to the projects in the, co in the comments under the video, so please uh, check that out, our viewers. Uh, Nina and Olga, I understand that you have to leave. Uh, you are probably very busy with the projects. Uh, we have been scheduling this call, I think, at around 2 a.m. usually every day. So, uh, wishing both of you a lot of success. Thank you so much for joining us, but of course, especially for your help uh, to the Ukrainian people in need. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please feel free to reach out to us. Maybe in general, it's info at unitedforukraine.org and we appreciate any help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you. All the best. Uh, Oliver, we are, we have stayed alone now. Uh, I wanted to uh, discuss with you um, uh, UkraineLegalAid.org. Uh, you are, uh, you are the person or probably you, you were the person behind this project. Uh, now there's many other people, as I understand. Uh, it is a website connecting refugees and lawyers offering to do pro bono work. Uh, can you tell us how this works, how it started, and uh, also, of course, how do we sign up? Because most people watching this are going to yeah, be. It's a great this. question. So I think you know how this whole start, how this whole thing started, was people emailing our firm saying, "Hey, we're interested in helping," and you know when we put their name into a spreadsheet, and if we had a request from a refugee and they had a request which matched their expertise, um, then we would try and just connect them. Uh, well, after this was picked up by uh, the Big Law Boys Instagram account, who's, who's a, a huge contributor to this, we started to get thousands of emails. And at that point, it was clear that we have to help, but it was also clear that this is an impossible task manually. I mean. I know that you know UkraineLegalAid.org sounds like it's an NGO and it's some sort of funded organization, but it's not. Um, it's a guy in Hungary. It's a, a meme page Instagrammer um, from the U.S. and a team of geniuses in California who are developers. And so that's the team. So you know what we are trying to do is is now is figure out a solution to get the most people helped, but also without having to manually do the process. This is a, it's very interesting. So you have now brought also people from the tech field to, uh, to create some sort of a, some sort of a platform that is, yeah, admittedly probably better than the Excel spreadsheet at the beginning, right? Uh, I was I was wondering. Um, I have seen on the, on the LinkedIn page that uh, there have been students, junior lawyers, asking if they can register to provide uh, legal advice, not to represent. Uh, how does that work? Uh, is that possible? Right uh, now? I mean, I mean. So in general, right? Uh, we want to make sure that lawyers, qualified lawyers, are the ones giving the advice. We appreciate students wanting to be involved, and, and we hope that there will be a way for them to be involved. Um, the way we imagine that working is that, you know, so, so, so the platform is, is being built by a team and, and I have to shout them out. Their, their, their team is called Hyperdraft and they're a legal tech company based in California. They make amazing software. Um, it's horrible for, for lawyers because your billable hours will go down by 80% because they automate everything that you do. Um, but what they're, they're brilliant. And, and so, you know, we asked them for help. And we said, look, we have this database and we have requests. How, how do we, what do we do? And how do we can't, it's impossible to do it manually. If we had a team of 500 people, I would say we can absolutely do it manually. Um, but what we decided to do is if, if your firm currently does pro bono, um, usually the way it works is you get an email every day or once a week from a pro bono organization and they send you a case description um, and it's anonymous but it gives the lawyer some background and then you can choose to accept it or you can choose to wait and accept the next one or, or whatever it may be. This system will be like that, except on a massive scale. So lawyers are going to be able to register. They will be vetted by Amicus who we're also partnering with and the refugees will also be vetted by Amicus just to make sure that they're not on any sanctions, watch list, there's no compliance, regulatory, money laundering issues on either side. And then you'll access this database of anonymous requests and the lawyer can simply say, you know, it's some, it might be someone who says, you know, I just fled to Poland and I want to start a business. So it's not all immigration lawyers. It might be, hey, I want to start a business. Can you help me? And so someone might say, ah, I'm a Polish lawyer. This is, you know, something that I can help with. I'll incorporate your company and you click on it. And on the back end, uh, 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 you get paired with this person in an email and, and you can start helping them. And then the case would be, you know, taken out of that database. Um, I know that there's tons of questions on the function and how and this and that, but again, we're six people um, trying to set this up. So we want it to be as automated as possible and we want to get people helped as soon as possible. No, but it's a very impressive project. So congratulations on it. 
Um, congratulate, uh, congratulate Hyperdraft, Peter. Hyperdraft are really good. So congratulate yeah. Hyperdraft. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you. Um, uh, also, like for joining me, and of course, as I told Olga and Nina, for helping out all these people in need. I think it's very, it's a very impressive thing that, uh, and that you, together with all these people, have managed to put to this together so quickly and uh, as I understand it's still developing and becoming better. Absolutely and, and again you know as soon as as soon as this version this functioning version is out and ready to go I'll share it with you Peter and, mm -hmm. and if you could share it for us that would be great because then then the lawyers sure. can start working you know then you can log in you can pick a case um, and you can you can go to you know you can start really doing meaningful work. No, thank you so much thank we will you, for Peter. sure put it into our comments under the under the video to uh, for our viewers to be able to click on it. We will promote it in social media, I promise that. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much, Oliver. Uh, and to you, dear viewers, if you can, uh, please help the people of Ukraine sign up for these projects. Uh, as I said, you will find the links to them uh, below the video and uh, consider donating towards uh, humanitarian relief. And you will see in social media that also many of our colleagues are raising funds. But uh, as also Olga and Nina have said, uh, they are posting a list of uh, organizations that they support or they propose on their website. Uh, many thanks for watching this special episode uh, and uh, stay safe.